Uh, before I begin, I'm going to have to give you a bit of a warning that the sermon is not as long as usual. So if you're planning on dozing off for five minutes and then picking it up, you're going to be lost. Okay? So you need to pay attention from the start. Today is Pentecost. Okay? 2,000 years ago, Christ sent the Holy Spirit to the followers of Jesus, and the Christian church was born. With the sound of a violent wind, the Holy Spirit filled the followers of Jesus, and tongues like fire rested on each of them. Jesus sent the Holy Spirit to be our guide, instructor, our comforter, and the one who would inspire and empower us to do great things for God. Now, I took the name of a popular R&B group from the 1970s for the sermon title to first to get your attention by appealing to your curiosity, but most importantly, to talk about the essence of the church. So let me explain earth, wind, and fire and how it relates to the church. First off, though, God created the church to continue spreading the teachings of Jesus and the message of God's love for all people. And here we are, 2,000 years later, entrusted to continue the work of sharing Christ's teachings and to show God's love in what we do. To accomplish this mission that, that God has entrusted to us, we need three basic things represented by earth, wind, and fire. The earth represents our grounding. In other words, we need to have a solid basis, a solid foundation from which to do our work. We need strong, solid ground on which to build our faith as a congregation. Just as a physical building needs good earth to stand and remain strong, so we too need the solid earth of loving faith in God and loving service to one another and our neighbors <clears throat> to provide the solid foundation to build this congregation and to do God's work. Next, we need wind. On the day of Pentecost, it was reported that the Holy Spirit came upon the followers of Jesus like a powerful wind. And as you recall, in the original Greek of the New Testament, the word for wind, spirit, and breath is the same. It's pneuma. It's the same word. So the wind we need is the Holy Spirit of God in order to be the church. Now, for thousands of years and to this day, people have raised sails to catch the power of the wind to move their boats or ships. For a boat with sails... The wind is a comfort, a challenge, a guide, and a strength to move forward into what may come. Since its beginning, the church has been described as a boat. The boat represents the followers of Christ in the world. The main part of the sanctuary is called the nave. It takes the name from the Latin word novus, which means boat. We get our English word navy from the Latin word novus. The church is the boat empowered by the Holy Spirit. As individuals and as a congregation, we seek the comfort, challenge, and guidance and strength of the Holy Spirit to move us forward into what may come. And our sails to catch God's Spirit are prayer, meditation, scripture reading, fasting, labyrinth walking, and a whole host more. These are the sails which catch the Holy Spirit and moves us forward in God's service. But we need more than raw power of the wind. Our boat needs a rudder to direct our movement. Without a rudder to steer our boat, we would be pushed here and there by the wind and we would just flounder. The rudder for our boat, our congregation, is our intuition and reason. We decide on a direction and destination for our congregation and then adjust our rudder to guide us in that direction and toward that destination. With a solid basis of faith in God, we use our intuition and reason to discern what God wants us to do. We put up our sails and receive the power of the Holy Spirit and then we use our intuition and reason as a rudder to guide that power that God wants us to do. <clears throat> okay, lastly, we need fire. 
On Pentecost, the Holy Spirit rested on each of the followers of Jesus as a tongue of fire above their heads. So how is fire an essential symbol for the church? Well, it's not to burn the boat that we are sailing in. Fire represents enthusiasm and excitement. That's what this quote is all about from John Wesley, founder of Methodism. When someone is working hard and or accomplishing much, we say that they are on fire. They are energized. They are empowered. That is what the church is meant to be, energized and empowered, on fire for God and God's work. We are meant also to be contagious like fire. Before we had fire departments and fire equipment, a small fire could quickly get out of control and whole communities could be burned up because fire can spread fast and far. Remember Mrs. O'Leary's cow. We're not supposed to burn people up, but we are to be contagious like fire and have the good news about Jesus Christ spread fast and far. When we are excited, when we are energized and empowered, then other people see it and feel it, and they too get excited and empowered and energized. God wants us to be contagious with Christ's love. So, earth, let us be well grounded with a solid foundation of loving faith in God and loving service to our neighbors. Wind, let us catch the presence and power of the Holy Spirit with prayer scripture reading, meditation, and more, so we have the energy to do God's work. And let us use our intuition and reason to discern how to direct that presence and power. And fire. Let us be on fire for God and God's work. Let us take that power and presence of the Holy Spirit and be excited, be energized, empowered to follow the lead of Jesus and to continue his work in the world that he died to save. So let us be contagious with God's love. Amen.